So give it up for the ever so excellent Mark Teodosio. And we're going. We are not live. We're recording. What is up? Who am I speaking to? What is your name? Let the people know who you are. What's going on, guys? It's the Villas by Yanni. <laughs> uh, Mark Teodosio, rapper from New York City. Um, comic book creator, MC, poet, hero, father, friend, salute. Yes, sir. I'm all about it. So I know we got to chat a little bit when you were visiting California not too long ago. Uh, yeah. And it's east and east west right here, all right? But it's really like the far east, both on the west, west. <laughs> uh, Word, right? But it's sweet, man. So we kind of got linked up through, you know, mutual friends in the Filipino creative community. Um, but yeah, I'll just let you get into first. I heard of you as an artist and creating your comic book that you're working on right now. Um, go ahead and how did you get into that, doing comics? Uh, so I started doing comic books just, you know, just for the love of just literature. I, I'm a, I was an English writing major. I always loved writing since a kid. I used to write my own comic books in like the fourth grade and pass it around class, um, making my own characters. There was some archetypal, you know, resembling like other characters that I've been a fan of since a little kid. But um, I, I it, it all it all stems in, from like just like uh, an affinity I had since a child. You know, I loved comic books. You know, I, I, who uh, doesn't? Who were some of your favorites growing up? Some of my favorites, you asked? Yes. Uh, some of my favorites is X Men. I was always a fan of Uncanny X Men. I used to love how they used to throw like the different icons of the faces that were in the book and stuff. Uh, Spidey for sure. Um, I was Classic. definitely like, a huge fan of like the Image Comics that came that uh, that branched from the Marvel that was popping off in the '90s around the time I was collecting in those years, um, and that that like started off with like Todd McFarlane creating Spawn, Jim Lee yes. who was drawing iconic X Men covers, uh, even like a Filipino creator, Will Sportacio, he had been part of that movement as well where it was Marvel artists that transitioned into creating in the indie books, their own indie company. So Will Sportacio is also the creator of Bishop, um, which was he's most known for, but he created Wetworks. It was his original joint. Um, but yeah, man, uh, just inspired by other creators, you know, pr um, preceding me and just, you know, just doing what I got to do to carry the culture. Yeah, man, I appreciate like every time I see you post, like it gets me motivated because you're always on to something and it just gets me like, hey, man, I need to keep up, keep putting something out. And I like that you're in different spaces, much like myself, um, which kind of brings me to your name. You go by Bayani. Your comic is also called Bayani. If you want to go ahead and explain what that means, maybe in terms of the comic itself and to you and maybe how that connects across your different like forms of expression yeah uh i could bridge this from the last question so you know being that the music and the my affinity for comic books have permeated in to each other and kind of meshed uh i had kind of taken the moniker of mark marvel and from mark marvel i was always dropping like some type of slick but street you know kind of gully as a New York term gully, like a thorough, you know, valid street style of using nerd core, you know, concepts, you know, like you'll talk about instead of saying like, you know, some corny, like swinging through your neighborhood, you know, like Spider-Man, you know, you might want to switch it up and go like, yo, I got that sticky, like Peter's, you know, uh, sticky, like Spidey's fingers, you know, like you want to switch it up and spice it up a little bit. But so, like, just coming from Mark Marvel, it, it totally evolved into me writing a comic book. And when I started writing this comic book and titled it Bayani and started digging into my Filipino roots, like, I shed the Marvel, the, Mar the Marvel off the mark and took my real name, Teodosio. And as I was, you know, kind of, like, embracing, like, my 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 true identity as Mark Teodosio, um, I said, let me just be that, like, as an artist. Like, 
let me not even hide behind like a name, right? So it was weird because now that I'm becoming Mark Theodosio, people start calling me Bayani mm -hmm. because of that comic book. So now people are calling me Bayani because one, it's easier than saying, yo, Mark Theodosio, I'm your number one fan. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yo, Bayani! Like, it's way funner. Like, funner. It's way more fun to, like, you know, kind of call by that name. It just has, like, a real fun and and bright aspect to it, you know? And uh, Definitely. I mean, every time you pop up on my feed or we're texting or whatever, I'm like, Bayani! Like, I just want to <laughs> scream it out. It's fun. and It gets me in a good mood. Yeah, facts. I usually use that as an introduction as well. But um that's that's basically like how it meshed like with the music and the authorship and you know the the tracing back into myself, finding my name, Teodosio, finding it was a Portuguese duke. The name originates with a Portuguese duke. And what was Ferdinand Magellan when he came to the Philippines? Mm. He was Portuguese, you know, uh funded by the Spanish. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just crazy because you know as you as the music comes to me and then the comic book writing the authorship comes to me i also find my path digging deeper into me you know as i explore outwards you know as an artist like i find myself going inwards at the same time you know internally reflecting through creating that's awesome man i i love it i know so we have boyani the comic and then now you go by boyani Right, and I know you've got also like music coming out, so you go right. go by by on you when you're releasing music, correct? Yeah, yeah. So I'm releasing new music, and uh, I've been debating like on whether taking the name as an artist is something I want to do, or just staying with Mark Theodosio. And a majority of the content is under Mark Theodosio, so it's gonna kind of play like a Nas Escobar, like a Method Man was also Johnny Blaze, you know. So mm -hmm. Mark T also by Yanni you know, like, <laughs> yeah not that, you know because I still want the comic book to have its own identity I don't want people okay. to start thinking I'm Bayani like in the comic book you know even though psh, plots was happen later you know Easter egg <laughs> things start dropping you know like through the book as the story unfolds oh sweet man yeah it's like uh Childish Gambino is actually Don Glover like it depends on like <laughs> it just depends on you know like what what you're working on um so it's quick yeah. kind of separate and i think it's even more impressive i think if people can discover you under one name and then they discover you under another and like oh that kind of looks like so and so that looks like marty or that looks like beyond like dude that's the same person <laughs> i actually just shared a, a photo of uh donald glover aka childish gambino because they're filming season three of atlanta which is his show and okay. uh, my brother was like, that kind of looks like Childish Gambino slash Strong Glover. I'm like, that is, that's cool that you know him by both names. But yeah, that is yeah, right. one and the same. And yeah, he's he's an actor and too, like, and he's right. He's, like, he's the creator of that show. It's awesome. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy because, you know, the artist is always kind of like, you want the artist to be separated from the personality, but at the same time, it's like you kind of take that work home with you sometimes, you know, like as an artist, like you come home and like you can't stop like envisioning like the future and being out of that box and that confinement of I'm limited. I have limited resources, you know, like you constantly like as you grow and evolve, like only not every artist like passion survives. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It's even for fighters, fighters may not like their passion may not survive because they had a kid or they have alcohol problems or et cetera, et cetera, whatever obstacle comes before them where can they still master their craft with this juggling this obstacle as well, you know? Yeah. I mean, you have, you see basketball players getting into like doing music of their own. You see football players trying to get into acting. You see a lot of like MMA fighters. You have George St. Pierre, GSP now doing like a lot of like, he's a lot of bad guys or he'll do like stunt work you know oh, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's cool i'm like oh shoot falcon and what's the soldier yes yeah 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 the he's a french guy uh the french yeah, yeah, bad yeah. guy so it's like oh man that's yeah. crazy to see people like even though it's there's a little bit of an overlap it's just like a completely different world and i think people like creatives and athletes you know athletes are creative in their own right you know 
to a certain point, it's like you are always looking for a little bit more, looking for like a new way to express yourself. At least that's how it feels for me. Performance. Right, right. Yeah, it's, you're performing in just a different way. For me, I like to all sum it up and just say, hey, I'm a storyteller, whether it's with music or with film, obviously podcasting, that's legit storytelling. Sometimes it's just like to write, you know, songs write for like say maybe like a potential like screenplay or maybe i'm just writing like, like whatever like things just come to mind and so you know at right. the end of the day like i just i want to tell stories and that's just who i am I, I it took me a while to figure that out i'm like oh what am i doing through all these things you know at the end of the day it's all it's all the same you know i'm just looking for different ways to express it and perform and, and develop you know what i'm saying because like at some point, like even the artist develops, like in the process of entering uh, a field or an industry, like, you know, I develop like from being a rapper, right? To changing like my writing form into comic books and then creating that. But then also recently, as of recently, really tapping into poetry, like writing yeah. poetry. And, and like, you think sometimes people hear poetry, like, oh yeah, like, like deep stuff like, right, right. like yo it's not even just deep stuff but it's like it's like when, when when you read like the bible like sometimes it'd be like real poetic like and you'd be like yo so was it exaggerated these things are they literal like you know what i'm saying like so when we write like even as lyricists we exaggerate certain things but it's it's like to kind of magnify the idea or the mm -hmm. concept or the issue we're trying to address you know Right, and but that, like oh, that's the art like, form, artist to a different writer to even like a CEO of your own company, and then managing artists on you because you're more seasoned, right? Even you, right? You want to be a fighter, start coaching, start training, and going in between stuntman, <laughs> body slam, you know, switching it up. Yeah, it, it's it's fun. I mean, especially a cool thing for me being Filipino now. Like through training martial arts, I discovered. Filipino martial arts, which I had up until like 18 years old. I had no idea it was a thing. And I was like, oh, what is Kali Listrissimo, like FMA? I'm like, oh, what? Like, and then I asked like family about it and my mom and aunts and uncles are like, oh yeah, it's our niece, like it's grandma. Like, like they all know, but like, how come no one's talking about it? And it's cool. Like right. w when you really push yourself to like new mediums, you get to like discover yourself, you know? And now like I'm using my Filipino martial arts training and like when i'm trying to do stunts and then do some film work you know because actually a lot of what you see on tv and movies is especially when there's like weapons involved a lot of it is filipino martial arts which is super cool right right and Great. i like the crossover i mean you you have uh, some fma you know highlights in uh, the video that you have dropping pretty soon cali stakes word i didn't really i felt like it was and it's like funny because like i caught dms <laughs> from from people asking me if I do our niece, you know, <laughs> or if I can teach them. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, I was <laughs> six, you know, and I was basic, um, you know, like, I didn't want to front like I'm an expert, uh, but I definitely do want to learn. I, I tapped into it in a way in the video. Cause the video is like ancestral as well, as well as generational. Like, it's our turn to really bring the flag and, and, and take it to that next level. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and and we're American, right? But we're really, something about us is ta like reaching, like, and, and it's not even, it might not even be us. It might be the spiritual realm reaching for us, mm. saying, yo, you're, you're, our, you're the next version of us. And if we could, if you could tap into who you are, then we could live through you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's like, when, once you tap into that spiritual side, because yo, Filipino martial arts, bro. When I touched those sticks, something about it was natural. I was like spinning it like this. And I was like, whoa, this is pretty like, this is pretty official right here. But, um. Yeah, man, it feels, it's, when I'm doing Filipino martial arts, it's crazy because it's so, it feels natural. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be doing this. This is exactly how I'm supposed to move. And they're just like, I feel like I just kind of fall into it and what what are you practicing right now so the what i'm learning i mean part of it is like learning from other stuntmen right and so it's applied more towards like you know working for the camera and the screen but i'm also like learning 
you know, through like a legitimate Filipino martial arts class, learning techniques. And it's crazy how, first of all, like how intricate it is. It's almost like it, it is a science, you know, because everything's broken down to angles and, okay, this is what you do in this situation. If you're off by like a couple inches, then this isn't going to work. Like you really have to like make sure the, things are locked in. If your blade is here versus here, right, it's going to be more effective or less effective. And so, you know, it's mad crazy. Uh, one of my Puerto Rican homies, like, so he was breaking down some moves to me, right? That were, it, it was a mix of like, you know, like different styles. But part of it was like the way he would like, like would flow with it. Like, it was just like, he'll be like, yo, I'll catch you here. Then boom, then I'll just flick your eyelid and you'll be like that. And then I'll just switch it over him and switch it over him. And, mm. and I was like, yo, bro. Like, and he was like, that shit is Filipino. He's like, you should learn this. And I'm like, word maybe i really should like because yeah, in all reality i do want that to be a super surprise you know yeah and i've I've trained with a handful of different people with filipino martial arts and i like it because it's such it's a pure form of mma to me it's a mixed wow. martial art because it's it, like just like languages in the philippines it really just depends on like who you learn from and that's probably gonna be more of a regional thing i mean you right. probably even the same town or province like you go to one instructor they're gonna have one style and you can go down the street and guys gonna teach a different way you know like, different. like my original background was you know very like big you're following through a lot and then when i trained um with some friends in la um the style was more quick choppy you leave your your weapon in front of you you don't want to keep your like, take your eyes off of the target i mean i always want to keep your eyes on target but you ever want everything's here in front of you in this little box Versus like the original style I learned, where it's a lot of big movements, very flowy, you know, and it's great for like stone work. Both have like little things that can put into film, but yeah. it's a it's a different mindset with the same goal at the end of it. And considering that that style of fighting is used or was used on a battlefield with hundreds of people, you know, going back to back, you know, it's like it just blows my mind. I'm like, man, he had to, like just have Yo, all these subconscious little <laughs> things. Huh? Can you imagine? Those oh things, yeah, like, man. Like that's it's crazy. That like, like just having a bunch of people back to back. My biggest fear is like if I lived in like an earlier period of time, I'm like, dude, I'm I swear, like either I'm gonna get caught or I'm gonna catch like one of my homies, one of my friends accidentally, hey dude, sorry about your hand. Like <laughs> I gave you like the, the Darth Vader special, like, <laughs> you know, just in the heat of the moment, you're just going, 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 going. Get going. out the way, bro. Once I start swinging, get out the way. Because yeah. <laughs> it's not like boxing where it's like, okay, cool, we're going to go for 12 rounds, just you and me, three minutes at a time, we'll take a one minute break, and it's going to be like a one to two hour event of just us, you know? That's like, why I love those warrior movies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, it's the Philippine martial arts, it's, it's quick, it's efficient, it's like, Get in, get out, like, be done with that opponent with as little effort as possible and little time as possible. Like, get it done, move on, make sure you're safe. Especially, I'm thinking, if you're on a battlefield, you don't go from guy to guy to guy to guy. You got, you got a long day ahead of you <laughs> when there's hundreds you, of people yeah. on the battlefield. Are you familiar with an iconic figure named Lapu Lapu? Absolutely, yes. That's the, I, I got to tap into that every time I'm training, man. Yeah, man. So it, it's just dope because, um, well, hey, let me explain real quick for the, for the people that don't know. Um, so I'm sure there's a lot of Filipinos that I don't even know. So Lapu Lapu is a warrior who is credited for being like one of the first defenders of the Philippines against, um, first, colonizers and, uh, is well known for defending the Philippines or what became the Philippines against, uh, Fernand Magellan, who we mentioned earlier. And, you know, basically had a reputation and this i believe is the uh south of the philippines has had a reputation of being just super hard to invade and a lot of that is due to lapu lapu and furthermore like the filipino martial arts because it's just such a brutal savage you know fighting style right and, and um in the book to add to add to what you're saying um i really i really explored that um did you get to what check the pdf yeah i did oh it's beautiful Freaking beautiful, like I, colors, everything. Can I can just stare at no. it. What was that? Can you pop that onto the screen or no? Um, I can. I can probably do it 
after <laughs> the recording just so people can see yeah just let me know what you want to post but um yeah man what part are you uh, do you have like a specific part that you're trying to pull up so in the beginning we open up with 1521 april 1521 mactan island on the shores where frederick Jalen lands mm -hmm. and this is all in purpose of basically saying that the first bayani is lapu lapu like recorded right um and it stems all the way to Marlon Ramos, the protagonist of the book. So, you know, I, I really love it because, like, you know, coming from Filipino martial arts, like, uh, originally, like, I imagined the character being Ongbak, Tony Ja. Okay. Like, imagine yeah. him being like, Pa, Arai, what's again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm all about it. So, like, I imagined him because, he, you know, Indonesians look kind of Filipino. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right, right. Uh, but, but he's Thai. He's Thailand, right? He's from Thai? I believe so. Yeah, he's from Thailand. But uh, him, uh, I, I don't even know why. Uh, I, feel like it, they, I feel like they shot in Indonesia or something. But anyway, uh, yeah, nah, I, I really imagined that being like how this character would be, Bayani. Like I imagined it being Tony Ja. Um, <laughs> but uh, just just past that, you know, the Filipino martial arts. Imagine like Lapu Lapu on the beaches. Ooh. Like these dudes are ancient. All they did was train. Like off. forget Dunkirk, man. <laughs> he was part else. of. The, he was part of the reason everyone pulled up. He was like the DMX of the Filipinos <laughs> in those days. <laughs> it's DMX, sick, he really pulled up. He was like, "Where my dogs?" Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they were all on the shores waiting. Like, oh, with a hood, with a hood, with a hood at. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Magellan came through like J Balvin and got body, please. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's good. DMX of the Philippines. That's sick. Yo, Fat really held it down, though. He said, pull up. And they pulled up and got dragged out by the, by the waves. They got learned. <laughs> they got washed. <laughs> word but yeah like you know just just saying you know like there's a lot of sh powerful elements in in our culture you know warrior um origins yeah and it i think discovering more like filipino martial arts and just filipino heritage in general is awesome and then like me i'm super grateful for someone like manny pacquiao you know sounds stereotypical to say but it's for me, growing up, like there were so many like other kids that just they didn't know what a Filipino was. Like they've never heard of the Philippines, and so I was like, especially living in Southern California, where I'm like super tan, you know, and I have like facial hair. Like, oh yeah, you're just like another Mexican dude. I'm like, no, like it's not a you know, I have nothing wrong with looking like a Mexican person. Like, I mean, I have Spanish blood through my Filipino heritage, you know, so we have that you know similarity. But you know, I always thought. Chris, well, I always thought, because I always looked at Mexicans in Cali like, why do you look mad Filipino sometimes? <laughs> yeah. Filipinos be looking mad Mexican sometimes. And I was like, yo, why is that? And I was like, yo, 40 years of trying to fight the Philippines, right? The Spanish. So they took 40 years to fight us. So that's like, that's like two, three generations right there of, of military, of soldiers that were raised like, yo, we got to go back to the Philippines because they keep spanking us. They keep spanking mm -hmm. us. We got to go back. So what I think they did is, and I don't know, you know, you can't beat them. <laughs> Pre-colonial historians, they watch this interview and be like, well, actually, you know, but I'm like, yo, did they go to Mexico and take all the Aztec warriors, made babies with them, and two generations later was like, we need those Aztecs to come to the Philippines. Uh, like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Maybe. Like, is that why we look kind of Mexican? Like, I don't know. Who know? I mean, it, the crazy thing about like Filipinos is that we have such a range of looks. I think people now. I mean, I've got you know half European blood in me, but. I'm sure just looking from you to me and like even my mom, like like there's a huge range. Even from my 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 grandma, my Lola to my mom, like crazy range, you know? It's right, right. it's anything from like 
more looking so like on the Chinese side to like you said all the way to like Mexican and even like Indonesian where it's like you know more like the even- native uh, Filipinos that are like dark and small and like yep. live in the mountains and you know it's like it's it's crazy we have like it, we're like the mutts of you know the area i was i was gonna say like indigenous hobbits yeah um, them basically yeah because it's just small but tatted up <laughs> tropical lord of the rings yeah man that'd be that'd be something i'd, I'd watch that'd be fun <laughs> we have volcanoes too you know <laughs> yeah but yeah yeah, man. Um, kind of backtracking a little bit. Like I said, I know that you are spread across different mediums, and so like one of the things I, I notice, uh, you, you have like the image of Bayani with headphones on. I'm like, oh, cool. Like kind of like doing a little nod to like yeah, your love for music. Yeah, man. And I imagine that has a lot to do with. And then you were were you born and raised in New York? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like. It's crazy because that's like hip hop was a survival kit. It was basically a Bible to the streets Mm. on how to conduct yourself, how to think, how to like kind of find your band of brothers, you know, on the block or on the hood. Like you had to align principally and then also just have like a certain code of loyalty. You know, hip hop was so key, man, like in so many ways for American culture, Mm -hmm. Um, especially for these generations. Yeah. Yeah. This generation right now, like, everybody gets mad at the youngins, but back in the 90s, dudes were spitting the same crazy kill your brother. (laughs) They were saying the same craziness. But, you know, we had more lyricism, I guess. But these days, kids are just even more melodic. You know Mm. what I'm saying? It's an evolved form of hip-hop. It's not not hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? It's just different. It's a new generation. They got a different language, a different philosophy, persona. Their information is way more advanced than us, you know? Uh, so, like, they're consuming things at, like, a really fast rate. So, you know, even their music, mad traffic. Mm-hmm. Likes, everything reflects, you know, the culture and the times. Um, but hip-hop is really that. But um, the reason why you see him with headphones, um, it's... And he's like kind of flying on turntables. That character really is is a reflection of Marlon, you know, of the protagonist. It's a reflection of him as Bayani, you know, and and it's basically his angel is his reflection. They're reflecting each other. Mm -hmm. One is in spirit form, the other is in physical form. So they're kind of like, you know, mirrors of each other. I always felt that way, you know, like, because you have an imagined version of you who's like way more cooler, way more like, you know, like somewhere in the future he exists. It's the better version of me and I'm going to, you know, like tap into him. And it's kind of like the same thing with Marlon, you know, but that hip hop element, it's pretty much, you know, what gives the vibe of that. Because the same way Kendrick Lamar saw Black Panther, I believe is the way that I'm envisioning my music tapping into Bayani, you know? It's having that same kind of like uh, marriage, you know, that union, vision visually and audibly. I like that, like bringing, yeah, bring the visuals to life, right through your music and vice versa. You know, it's, I love it. I love it. You know, like your your storytelling in more ways than one, and then it's it's cool because you're you have this contrast of modern the, society and then you know with the body. Comic, exactly bro. yeah you listen to them i guarantee you, you're gonna turn a page and the song's gonna match that page you could randomly pick songs and somehow somewhere the, the dialogue's gonna match you know what i'm saying because i i've started writing music with the intention of blending them oh no? there we go yeah go ahead let, let's talk about uh this new music video that you have coming out pretty soon Right. Uh, so yeah. So this is an exclusive uh, conversation because I haven't spoken about it. Oh, but, there we go. You heard it here first. <laughs> Facts. Heard it here first, bro. Um, so yeah. Uh, Changes. Changes was a record that I wrote in 2019, actually. Um, going into 2020, uh, it, it was really influenced. A lot of by, changes like, in 2020. 
Yo, it's <laughs> and, and it's wild because like I like I originally imagined like a racial kind of you know kind of video like a racially themed video and then i just never shot that like i had like i spoke to different directors exchanged ideas we're gonna get a white room and just kind of make it more dramatic you know and more like acting and symbolism mm. but then i was just like nah 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 and i was going through a lot at the time so financially and creatively i wasn't focused but like this year in 2021 like it started with me getting COVID. Like I caught COVID and like, you know, I, I'm gonna just say this, like I really like kind of like went into like a whole spiritual experience during that time. Because you know, like you're not eating, you're sleeping at crazy times, you're waking yeah. up and you can't sleep and then you're just like all messed up. So when I got that, like I caught visions like of just like, ex ex existential kind of like you know revelations mm. so like when i started finding out stuff about myself my past and and just like looking at like how like the cause and effect of everything like that song is really what like what like resonated with me the most out of all the music i was writing something about the tribal drums and stuff you know like that were playing in the beat it was produced by a dude named Mark Arenseja, and he goes by Curiente. And Curiente in Tagalog means electricity. This dude is like one of those studio geeks. Like he's visually like, like, a vi like he's my director. He was my original director, but then he started teaching in the university, grew a family, bought a house wow. up in New York and, and really evolved as a man. But when he sent me that beat, it's not natural. It wasn't a regular, like, oh, I'm going to spit a verse on this, <laughs> spit a, a, write a chorus. Like, it was like something about it was like, changes, evolving, am I changing? Can't keep up the same things, explaining how loving me could be dangerous. Would you take the risk? And it was more like, I felt like I could hear everyone saying it. You know, in that time, I felt like a lot of relationships were strained because we were home, stressed out, tired. People weren't working. There was just so much strain. And I felt like it wasn't just changes, but it was really like it. It, it was like on every plane of our existence, even to, to like our beliefs. Like, could we trust our own government? Like, yeah. did they plan this? You know, what is this? Like, then the then the uh, the elections, then the racial, ten the social tensions going on, you know, like, it was just so much, you know? And then people, like, broken up are, like, self, like, exp like, r like, I don't even know, like, developing. Like, everyone went into a self-development mode, mm, right, you know, right. and, and learned how to kind of, like, evolve out of this time. But that was the best part of this time, you know, like experiencing those changes, experience, like influence that record, you know? And, and when I read Bayani to that song, like I could listen to that song for the whole book and be like, it just matches it. So like when I chose that video is because I knew that was going to be the one that hit because everyone that heard it was like, yo, I see this in a movie, you know? So hearing that from like multiple people made me say, yo, I got to shoot this video. And after COVID or whatever the case is, all of my clubhouse contacts, Instagram contacts, everyone seemed to be in Cali. So <laughs> something inside me was like, yo, go to California and show yourself, like unmask and show people who you are. You know, like something inside me gave me that internal dialogue and understanding like immediately when you get the chance and some stimulus check comes in you know <laughs> you know so i took that check and invested into it into friendships into experience into lifestyle into you know a place of, of sanctuary right and i didn't have to worry about waking up and getting to work or when am i going to do this that and the third like i was out of that i got to step out of that space and be fully focused on chasing what my heart was beating for every day. Yeah. Every day I'm 
and it was all quality, you know, um, link ups. Yeah, and it was it was great. I mean, like we went from you and I, we went from just dudes in a group chat that like, hey, yeah, like I like know of this guy on the internet to hey, now we're here having dinner, eating some good Filipino food, connecting, yeah, <laughs> yeah you know, the proper <laughs> Filipino way, and then now we're doing this podcast. It's it's cool, man, to see like this evolve and see like, hey, you know, like if you really want to get out there and one like share your vision and your message, you know, get after it, go do whatever you need to do, you know, and make it happen. And you did. And then after like we met up, I know you were hitting different comic book stores. You're meeting up and networking even more in LA. And then you even went to the Bay area. Like you were all over the place. Yeah. And after the Bay area, that's when I knew like, well, I planned to meet up with some dudes out there. Uh, they were called eight visuals, applied pressure entertainment. And they just showed man love. Like the dude that, that really like, well, two of them linked up with me, Kyle and Callie. And in, in all reality, we really didn't know where we were going to shoot. We knew it was going to be in San Fran, but we didn't have a treatment exactly. So when I linked with my friend, Jay Soul, um, Josiah basically kind of brought the Cali sticks. Um, I said, bring a sword. I was like, I got the Bayani mask. We'll do day scenes and night scenes. You know, and, and that's where we just basically came up with the concepts and created a story, like just from travel, like traveling through the day, you know, getting certain scenes done. Then we were like, oh, you know where this can end up? Boom. And we just hit the last scene. The last scene was really what set it off for me, you know, because it's the Bayani mask for, for, for the Bayani soundtrack. And it's like lined up. Everything's just lining up, aligning. Okay, I mean, it, once that's released, gotta just have it on repeat or going through the book and just like having that all yep. come together. Yeah, man. Yeah, we're getting our Kickstarter ready. So after this, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna map out the Kickstarter for real, for real. Oh heck yeah, man! Yeah, let me know what if you already have a link or if you're getting links soon. I'll, I'll plug that into the description. <laughs> um, yeah, dude, freaking hey. So uh, did you? I don't know. For some reason, I have this in my mind. Did you do a Kickstarter before? Yeah, we did a Kickstarter before for Bayani Rebirth, um, and that was the 2020 book, uh, which was really crazy. We, we we really caught a lot of people's attention and garnered support, so that was really a great look. Um, it helped us finish that book, uh, which was so, so pivotal for me because it was the Rebirth. It was basically me bringing my best to the table after having an amateur debut, um, going through so many different phases, failing certain like parts of the process, but never giving up, just really evolving, toughing, taking the losses and going forward, you know? Yeah, it, it's uh, it's always hard like trying something new and like trying, even like me doing the podcast, man, I got freaking haters in the comments on YouTube. I was just checking it earlier. I'm like, freaking A, man. But you know what? Like, what, what I did tried, I say? Uh, see the thing is, I had I had the notifications and then I couldn't find the actual comments after like the page refreshed, um, but they're like ah oh, this dude rambles for so long. I'm like, it's called completely Ken. The idea is that we talk for a long time and you guys get the full view. I was like, this guy doesn't understand, but you know what? Like for I looked at it, it's like for someone with no experience, no training, and I'm doing my own thing, put on my own show, bringing my own guests on. Like I'm happy with what I got, and I'm getting better every time. You know, it's all about the process. You know, just much like with your comic, right? You had your first go. You got your first few at-bats. You got to understand, okay, cool. I'm feeling this out, right? This is how you're supposed to do this now. Okay. Or I did really good over here, right? So I'm going to keep doing this. But I had these yep. new elements. And now next time around, you have a rebirth. Boom. And then you had Bonnie Rebirth. And it's a beautiful comic, man. Like I said, I feel like... I wish I can just like stare at it for for hours. <laughs> just have it like if I could put it on like my TV and just have it like do a little slideshow, I would. You know, it's super cool. It's beautiful, man. We need some holographic technology. Yeah, that'd be cool. Cause then I feel like I'm on the beach. <laughs> Word <of> fact. <laughs> the beach scenes in there for Cebu. But sweet but man, yeah. when uh, do we have a release date for your video coming out? Videos this Friday. Uh, yes, there you go. Like May fourteenth. May fourteenth. So, is that is that the date for Friday? I can't. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. Today's the twelfth. So, 
by the time this gets out, it'll be out. So if you guys are listening right now, check it out. I'll have the links in there so you guys can go ahead and check it out and understand. And then obviously you check the other links too so you can get a little background on Bayani the comic and how this plays into the video. Um, yes. that's sweet, man. And then how can people go about getting into some, uh, getting their hands on Bayani and learning more of the story? Uh, yeah, so I would just suggest, you know, following the page uh, at The City Needs You. That page really, like, just states all the direct stuff. It's no personal stuff for me. It's all, like, straight through the publishing and, and, you know, the management. So The City Needs You is the best place to go to find out any news on Instagram. Uh, you can follow me at bayani.myc. And I'm always putting out exclusive material, you know, uh, new panels, uh, panels that need to be seen. Uh, yeah, so just following the Instagram and follow the YouTube. The YouTube is the best thing, too, to get new music and, you know, just get all the exclusive content. Uh, I'm going to try to get this interview, too, put that on the YouTube so all more of my peoples can tune in as well. Completely candid, baby. Yes, sir. And that's what it's been, man. Um but sweet. And speaking of being candid, you know, right now we're still in AAPI month, Asian American Pacific Islander month. Um, what does that what does that mean to you, especially as, you know, an Asian American creative and also an Islander native? That's the always been an interesting thing. Like, what is a Filipino? Are we Asian? Are we Pacific Islanders? Are we you know, it's like we always get tossed around sometimes, you know, on, on some forms, just as Filipino, you got Asian. But it's like we're also like. You know, like at least my heritage is also kind of like, you know, Hispanic through my Filipino heritage, but we're also right. Asian, but also Pacific Islands. So, and then now some of these forms just like, all right, you're just Filipino. <laughs> like, you're your own thing. Like, well, we don't understand what it is. But anyway, what does it mean to you to so, uh, have this month and have this, you know, time of recognition? Uh, it's crazy. It's just, it's, it's like, it's like wild because like nowadays, like we have, Every day is like a certain day, like girlfriend day, national yeah. dog, You're right? You know, like your favorite book day, like whatever. Like it's just crazy. But A A A P I month, like for me and now, like in my adulthood and my full maturity, it's just a time to be super active and super collaborating. And when I say super, it's like it's because you you really got to go hard, like in pushing your not just culture, but really like just looking to inspire people to to look into themselves, you know, because it goes past your skin color, your nationality and all that, because it all comes down to, yeah, you can know all your history, but do you love the brother and sister next to you? Or, you know, do you are you setting like an example where tomorrow, you know, kids, kids are really like looking to be like you. And, you know, like a AAPI month for me is just inspiring the next Filipino kid to do something I haven't done, you know, for the culture, you know, mm -hmm. because for us, like, I'm not even going to take the bragging right of it, but there's not that many Filipino writers right now in this time that people know about, you know, like, and it should be, there should be somebody out there pushing for it. And I feel like, I don't, I don't only own the charisma that God placed inside of me, but I also have the ever, like, eternal desire to learn more about myself and share it with the people, you know? So it's, it's just really crazy how this calling has came about for me as a creator, you know? Because I always thought it was about me, 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 but it's about us, you know? And, and that's what really changed you know, my perspective for a day and, and months like this, like it's us, we got to push for us and hopefully people respect it. Like we respect everyone else's culture, you know? Absolutely, man. It It's refreshing. And again, it, it feels so nice to see something that I can identify with. Like I said, like as a kid, other kids didn't know, like, like you're Filipino, like what is that? What does that mean? Like where where is the Philippine? Where where is Filipino? You know, like they just had no idea, and so like you, seeing... you know what I hear a lot? I hear a lot like people be like, "Yo, not not for nothing, bro." But my best friend's Filipino. Like somebody always says that. To me. Like yo, my neighbor was Filipino. The one Filipino person you, I know. <laughs> you make pence it. You make pence it. <laughs> always, always pence it. Lumpia comes up right away. 
It's people good. I can't us. can't lie, but you know, people love us, bro. Black people relate to us because you know we are the we are like the 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 brownest Asians in in. Yeah. The- besides indians indians are pretty dark too but like i feel like we kind of hold more more of the resemblance and then we got the latinos we're afro asian latinos mm-hmm. you know like or we're latino afro asians <laughs> however you want to put it yeah. we have all blends across the board for a, a a genetic buffet yeah like i said we have such a crazy range you yeah. know and it's we have all those different cultures in us because we've had people coming and going. And so there's like, there's no like one true Filipino look or identity, you true. know, especially when you come over to the, to the U S like us, you know, not growing up in the Philippines or even for those that had like early life in the Philippines and then coming over to the U S like there's a whole other culture that comes with that, you know, Filipino American. Yeah, man. You I mean, we all start off like, just like, Trying to like figure out who we are, then we say, "Oh, hey, like Jabawaki, Zach. We're cool, man. We're cool. <laughs> we got Bruno Mars, Manny Pacquiao. Like we're doing some stuff. You know, we're getting <laughs> out there. You know, it's cool. Like, you know, the one thing I really appreciate about like uh, when I watch Crazy Rich Asians, I brought my cousins you know, out there for their birthday to watch that, and I loved how it grabbed all of, like different Asian cultures in there, and had different you know notable Asian actors in there." And, like, I was like, oh, shoot, man. Like, this is the first time I'm, like, going to the theater. I'm like, yeah, that's me. Like, that is, like, my life. I identify with those things and those little nuances and cultural expectations. And I was, like, I was, like, choking up. I was, like, I was so just happy that I could bring my Filipino cousins with me. And be like, hey, look, like, that's us, like, right there. Like, finally, you know. And I, that's why I love, like, what you're doing now with Bounty. It's like, hey, look. You know, and Marvel just like got on the train with the whole like Filipino after, thing. Rob, though, after I debuted in New York Comic Con, mm, mm, mm. <laughs> we like, started turning. A diverse uh, cast of characters coming, right. Filipino one included. You're right. And that was right. the hottest one. The hottest one was the Filipino girl, uh, Wave. I would love to write her. Like, if I get the chance to pull up in Marvel. I'll be like, yo, let me write Wave, bro. And then I'll debut Bayani. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, man, it's cool to be like, hey, look, like, it's same thing, the same feel like uh, Shang-Chi and having, like, uh, Into the Badlands, you know, like, it's kind of more alongside that you know, traditional, like, superhero route. You know, I feel like, like, Jet Li, Jackie Chan, Bruce Lee, like, I carried, you know, the weight for a long time and then kind of became, like, a stereotype. You know, you're making a lot of loud noises and you're being kind of funny and moving a certain way, you know, and which is all good. I totally respect that. Like, still look up to that. But it's like we're more than just like these kung fu. It's like, hey, look, we're diverse. Like, we have our own struggles. You know, it's not just like all of us are doctors and nurses or Jabawakis. <laughs> It's like a lot of notable actors that are like Filipino. Like there's the lady, I forget her name as well. I gotta get familiar with her, but she uh she was in the in the Mandalorian. Um they, I don't know if you knew about her, but um then you got, you know, Ernie Reyes, Teenage mm-hmm. Mutant Turtles, Last Dragon, Rufio, Peter Pan. Yes. I mean Phillips. <laughs> Lou Diamond Phillips, a lot of people don't yeah, even realize man. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's nice to, you know, it's nice discovering that, but it's like, it's almost like tough. Cause I feel like, you know, for them, they had a, like, like not ride on it. Like Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah. They definitely didn't ride on it at all. Yeah. Nothing about that name lets me know. Like, oh yeah. It's probably a Filipino dude. You know, it's, it's tough, you know, and you, you hear the story over and over again in Hollywood. It's like, oh yeah. You know, I chose this stage name because, you know, back in the day probably wouldn't get casted as much you know if i had used my more traditional you know ethnic name it's that's like tough and i'm now like whether it's for money or whatever i'll take this asian pacific islander just wave of color that's being pushed in the media right now i'll take it because we need it and we've been waiting for it and it feels good to be like yes like that's me that's my family like 
I see myself in this character, in that person. Like this yep. is an environment that needs to be shared and have some light shed on. You know, it's not all just noodles and kung fu. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, nah, man, it's super key, bro. It's super key to just take this all, take this all in and know we're part of it, bro. We're part of this right now. Absolutely. Well, I know you got to get going, but again, I'll grab all the le- links from you. Don't uh, log off quite yet. Um, I'll just do a quick little chat so I can grab everything I need. But thank you, sir, for so much for giving me your time. Let people know that there's some super filipino ness out there in the world Bad. and yeah man it's it's been good hopefully you can see what else you got going on pretty soon and we'll see you out more into the comic world the music world and yeah folks if you like everything that you heard today go ahead follow up everything's gonna be in the description and that's all for today thank you so much everyone for tuning in Thank you, thank you, thank you, and bye-bye. Salama!